Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 24 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem Nerd Dice. And today we are going to do a retrospective on what we've done so far, particularly between release 0.1 and release 0.2. I have poured myself a glass of scotch to celebrate the release, and we're going to kind of take a look in terms of um, the agile principles, the idea of continuous attention uh, to improvement, and at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective and then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Uh, I am a team of one right now, so I'm the product owner, the development team, the scrum master, and um, all those things rolled into one, kind of like that Bugs Bunny baseball cartoon where he plays all the positions. But that doesn't mean you can't do a, a, a retro. Uh, there, You can still apply the principles of Agile in any situation with any number of people in any size team. So that's what we're going to try to do here. I'm using the uh, the retro.io um, app for my retro board, and I kind of pre-filled these in because, as noted in one of my uh, items to improve there, um, pause the video for typing more often. People don't need to watch me type. So that's what we've got. It, this uh, is uh, retro.io. It looks like retro, but um, they're from Denmark, so maybe that's how you spell retro there. I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe they just couldn't get the domain name and still pronounce it retro. But I listened to the videos. They pronounce it retro. It looks like retro. Uh, but they've got a, a pretty good free option for a retrospective board and so that's what we're going to uh, to use it for so if you're not familiar with the the agile retrospective idea the idea is that you you want to document what went well what uh, could have gone better or things to improve and then action items on those so that's kind of what we've got here I did some color coding um, kind of green for things that were good and stay good and then blue for things that uh, improved or uh, adapted during the course of the uh, what we'll call the sprint and then um, in terms of to improve I just kind of went red orange yellow in terms of uh, severity of the things I want to improve and I've kind of come, got them stack ranked here. Uh, typically you can do this depending on how large your team is. You could do it um, kind of where you can see here my name is shown. You can do this so that it's anonymous um, depending on where you are as a team and how much trust has been built and all those things. So what you want is um, it, it's better to to have it anonymous and have uh, people give candid and direct actionable feedback than it is to um, for, have people attach have their names attached to stuff and be afraid to speak up. So, um, but in this case, all the feedback is from me. All the feedback is going to me. So that's what we've got. So let's go through what went well. So I think overall the, the code quality is good. The um, what we're developing is is running well. The um, the improvements and uh, things that we did with um, our random generator or over version 1.1 1 .1, um, I think really did improve the performance, even though it's still quite fast. Just when you call normal rand um i think we got to the bottom of some of those things explained some of the random number generation things to um in that random generation video i think it was number 11 in the series and um 
went on here. I'm also noting here that the uh, the retro is not limited to uh, coding stuff related to the gem. So you can see there's stuff here about my uh, audio balance when I'm recording. Everything's fair game here. Um, the test suite still runs quickly. So that's one thing that you want to be able to do is have tests that run quickly because you'll run them more quickly and uh, you, you run them more often and um, not have a situation where you, you need to, every time you run your test suite, you need to go get a cup of coffee or take a walk or something like that while it runs, uh, which can, especially when, if you're running a large Rails application with a lot of um, integrations and stuff like that, that can be a, uh, something to watch out for. The, the audio balance between intro and talking uh, has gotten better. So in the first few videos that I released, you had that blast of hack the stateless code, and then you could barely hear me talk for the um, for the other start. So you'd have to kind of the user would have to turn stuff down, turn stuff up, or um, just um, I don't know what they do, but um, not listen past the intro. Uh, so we've got that the. Um, I'll note here the, we'll also, we improved our, um, improved our branding and logos, uh, throughout the course of this, I'll add that in there. Um, so we added during one of these issue during one of these um, things here if we go to the settings I think it is so we've got our uh, our branding here uh, we we even iterated on the the branding over the course of this so um, one of the things I might look into doing is um, going through how I did some of this um, scalable vector graphic stuff with Inkscape, um, particularly on the perspective and stuff like that on the sides of the of the die. Um, it's it's something I'm brand new at, so I'm not a definitely not a pro at it or anything. But uh, when you're a computer programmer, you really only need like uh, I think I'm considering naming the uh, the video series enough Inkscape to be dangerous. So just enough uh, of that scalar, scalable vector graphic stuff to be able to, to get by um, and um, at least give yourself a, a decent looking placeholder until you're able to uh, hire or find a, a, a really professional graphic designer to do uh, some of that stuff for you. So that's uh, what we've got there. Uh, the so I, I switched uh, keyboards over the course of the sprint. So I started out with my um, with my clicky clacky mechanical keyboard that I'll uh, I still have on my desk here. So and it's still hooked up to the. So a lot of <laughs> what you heard in these earlier videos was me using that mechanical keyboard, and now I've got a, a sleek low profile. Mac keyboard that I've had on my desk uh, all along. I use it at work so that I don't um, so that I don't distract people on a Zoom meeting when I'm typing or something like that. Uh, so I decided, even though I've got <laughs> kind of unplug it from the work laptop, plug it into uh, to my Linux machine here uh, in order to make it a less distracting audio experience for the um, the viewer. I let's see here. We adapted to Ruby 3.0, so if you haven't watched it yet, I did release a, a kind of immediate reaction to the 3.0 release called uh, Nerd Christmas and Real Christmas. You can uh, go there for more in-depth stuff on what's new in Ruby 3.0 and kind of my initial reaction to it. It has gotten better. Like the, the dependencies, there were a lot of deprecation warnings in version 2.7. Uh, 
that stopped working in 3.0, so there are a few uh, items that um, needed to be fixed in order for my uh, my Rails training app to uh, to have everything passing and running properly in 3.0. But uh, the Nerd Dice gem, there's only one line of code where the compatibility between 2.7 and 3.0 matters at all. I think it is, no, it's in the refresh seed method. So right here, we just have Ruby version uh, to float is greater, less than three, random default, and then use random. So that's the, um, the only real item that we have that's a, compatibility mismatch between 2.7 and 3.0 so far um, and uh, from seeming seeing some of those other gems fail in that was what caused me to uh, rethink what I was doing in terms of the um, the keyword arguments here so I had before options equals empty hash and you had to kind of include that uh, empty hash instead of using the keyword argument. So people messing it up and getting deprecation warnings caused me to look more into that. And I think it's a better, um, it's kind of a classic Ruby um, idiom when, uh, when done well. So that's something we learned from 3.0. Um, let's see here. And then, so we're through. What, um, what went well, now let's take a look at what uh, we need to improve. So uh, if you've been watching along, and I apologize, there were two videos. Um, I went from a, a 1080p monitor to a 4K monitor, and I use um, Open Broadcasting Studio to record my stuff and didn't realize until after I was going into um, to piece things together that the, uh, the 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 video didn't scale properly so I essentially had a quarter of the screen uh, showing so um, I'm not I'm not gonna go back and re-record the whole video but um, that's definitely something that I need to keep an eye on and improve going forward um, Speaking of which, I really hope I've been, hold on. All right, I think we're good. I, I was afraid for a second there that I record both the last video and this video with no, no video at all and was uh, about to panic, but it looks like we've got that. So um, the, the videos went too long. So if we go to my YouTube channel, or if you've been following along, they had we had some videos that ran over an hour, some as long as like an hour and 20, an hour and 30. Uh, that is too long for one. Uh, that's a long time to try to capture somebody's attention. And two, uh, if I'm trying to target uh, 20 minute videos that something that goes an hour and a half, uh, that could, instead of, like oh, I was on vacation, I didn't release any videos while I was uh, on vacation last week. Uh, I, if I had broken up some of those uh, hour and a half long videos into three or four videos, then I would have had a, a robust backlog of scheduled videos that I could have posted and released. Um, and then th they also become more topical. So somebody searching on the internet for one particular topic could more easily uh, find just the video that they want rather than trying to slog through an hour and a half video to get what they need. So that's definitely a watch item. I did that between, so I was planning on having release and retro be one video uh, originally and then I was at around 22 minutes and I said no we need to we need to split that and have the release be one video, the retro be another video. So I'm I'm trying to improve on that. It's just a, a matter of um, recognizing it and uh, 
stopping things, uh, kind of calling the moment and stopping the video and maybe doing a little bit more post-production to, uh, to break things up and uh, work with things. Um, so uh, one thing that came up is that I'm, I'm pretty rusty with RSpec, so I've been using, uh, I learned Ruby and learned Rails with RSpec, but that was probably around 2015 and then starting around 2017, I went pretty heavily into using uh, Minitest for my, my primary test suite. And so it, I, when I went back and did this, I decided I was going to, um, to do this with RSpec partially to reacquaint myself with it. And um, I have shown that I'm uh, a bit rusty with some of the uh, kind of idiomatic RSpec that, um, that you use RuboCop has helped me some with that um, and then there are some things that I just need to um, probably refresh myself with it and I've got some I've got that as a um, as an action one of my list of action items um, so I've got if you watch the last video uh, I added some asset files and branding files to the repo uh, and the bundled version of the gem ballooned from 20k to 400k uh, in terms of its size, and so I had to remove those. I think I'll probably wind up creating a um, a separate repo for stateless code assets that people can um, can use and refer to. I want to keep the the gem itself as uh, small and lightweight as possible. Um, maybe something like a an additional gem that integrates with Rails or something like that, there may be uh, a need to have um, some of those assets. Like if you want to display a die roll when you roll it or something like that, um, the the Nerd Dice generator itself doesn't really need to store that. It should be able to take a path uh, for whatever type of file that you want and uh, work with it. and um, and you don't really need to store the assets in there, so I got rid of them. Um, this is a, a big one here. So one of the things you want to do in Agile is constantly be delivering val valuable and useful software to the user. Um, so the ability to choose a random randomization technique is uh, pretty far into the weeds. I don't know if anybody's going to uh, to care about it or use it um, but I think some of the concepts we we covered with it were pretty neat it kind of gave us from a teaching standpoint the ability to deliver value in terms of the um, setting up the configuration using keyword arguments um, more information about the um, just the nuts and bolts of pseudo random number generation. So uh, I think it, there's a lot of value there for in terms of uh, teaching content, but perhaps not so much in terms of the gem itself um, that we, we threw in a, a default configuration, but I, I don't know um, really how much users will uh, do any customization of the, uh, the randomization um, because they probably don't care unless they're running a casino, in which case they probably want to roll their own, uh, randomization rather than using mine anyway. Um, and then this is an kind of a related item to the videos going along. So the random randomization technique choice was an epic and could have been broken down into smaller stories. We kind of tackled them as smaller stories, but in some cases we hit, we had four or five different kind of story level commits that went into um, into one part of uh, of this, and so um, we had probably issue number one probably had eight or nine videos associated with it, including some really long ones. So um, just kind of remember to stick to. Uh, kind of epic level stuff as an epic and I probably should that should be kind of the definition of what we do for a release so you have uh, kind of a 
a point release for an epic and then you break it down into as many uh, kind of bite-sized stories that you can tackle um, and then uh, last but not least it's easy to forget about Ruby 2.7 after switching to 3.0 so there were a couple commits uh, where if, if we had switched to 2.7 and ran the test suite uh, our build would have been failing if we had a build so um, pursuant to that we've got some action items uh, one of those is to get a basic CID C CICD suite working uh, so that for 2.7 and 3.0 we can just run those every time there's a pull request and uh, not have to remember to to do it um, manually uh, and then that also I think adds to the robustness and the um, uh, maturity and everything like that of the of the gem and I'm I might tackle that next before going to some some more feature heavy t stuff. I'm not experienced with using uh, CI CD on the GitHub project, so I'll, I'll kind of be learning and muddling my way through that. But I think we'll, we'll probably have like a Hello Travis episode where we just try to get stuff running and then we kind of incrementally add on so that we can at least have our, um, have our test suite running and passing. Um, for all of our supported versions of Ruby every time we do that. Um, we've already touched on the, op on the idea of splitting stories, so uh, kind of think of the epic as your release, your stories as one video's worth of material, trying to keep it uh, between 20, 15, 30 minutes. Um, and then if you think it's gonna go longer than that, then um, kind of split the story look into putting things into separate videos. Uh, it may be valuable to, since we're using test-driven development, in some cases have the, uh, the tests, uh, kind of the failing tests in one video, the, uh, the code to make them pass. In the other video, we can try running some experiments and seeing what works. Uh, so remembering to pause the video for typing more often. I usually catch myself after I've been typing and subjecting you to me typing for uh, for 30 seconds or so. But uh, you, you you know how to type. You don't need to see me type. Um, I mean, I'm okay at it, but it's not uh, a performance uh, art. You don't need to to watch that. You can if, you, if I'm going too slow and I paste in or type in a big chunk of stuff, you guys can pause the video and read what I did. Um, and then um, thought that it might be valuable to make some some videos, as I noted earlier, for my, uh, my Inkscape, Inkscape SVG work. So we'll, we'll see about making some of those um, and um, experimenting with releasing them. Uh, as it relates to the, um, the different dice things and logo things and all that that we've been working on. Uh, and then um, finally, consider some refresher training on our spec. So um, as noted, I'm rusty on it. I, should, I could stand to, um, to refresh myself on the um, the best practices and uh, current state of how to do our spec well. The one more thing in closing. So um, as I, I clicked on this earlier in the video, but just remember the um, kind of keep agile principles in mind. Um, the uh, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. So I think we're doing a pretty good job on this on the code, not so much on the tests. So we're, <laughs> I think we've got a lot more, uh, a lot more characters associated with the, uh, the tests surrounding our code than we do on the code itself. Um, so just kind of keep that as a, as a watch item. I, 
uh, I do believe in testing and having meaningful tests and meaningful assertions on your code, but it is possible to, uh, to over test and it is possible to make your tests too complex. I'm going to take a look at our 